that's uh that's pretty pointy huh. oh hey guys uh it's tim buckland here at the air force space and missile museum and behind me is a redstone now redstone is actually quite popular amongst the space history circles because on top of redstone was Alan Shepard, who rode into space to become the first American to do such a thing. And back in 1958, Redstone was used to launch the first American satellite, Explorer 1. But that's not what this vehicle right here was designed to do. This right here was designed for one purpose and one purpose only. And that was the destruction of the Soviet Army. Now, by 1949 when the Soviets detonated their first nuclear weapon, we were trying to figure out how we were going to deal with these guys. Now, in 1946, Stalin had a very popular uh, speech where he talked about World War II and what caused it. And in his words, the cause of World War II was the capitalist world order. Now, to get a little context, at the end of World War II, the United States genuinely desired peace. Harry Truman took the U.S. military, the monumental force that had accumulated over World War II, the 10,000-ship navy, the 30,000-strong heavy bomber fleet, and decimated them. In fact, far more than decimated them. It was an arms reduction that has never been seen in all of history. The United States took the largest and most powerful military to ever exist in all human history, and gave it away because they genuinely wanted peace. We genu genuinely wanted peace. But the problem was Stalin once again. Now in the eyes of Stalin, what had caused World War II was the capitalist world order. And whether or not this is true doesn't really matter. What matters is this is what he believed. And he was in charge of the largest ground combat force to ever exist, the Soviet Army. Now the Soviet Army had fought a very different war than the US Army did. Uh, much more mechanized and heavy armor intensive conflict and it was clear that comparing these two forces if they were to go head to head it would be a little bit difficult for the American military to defeat this massive Soviet horde but luckily for the United States we had a device the nuclear weapon which guaranteed that if the Soviets tried to do such a thing that we would murder them. But then in 1949 things got a little bit more complicated. The Soviets detonated their own nuclear weapon and the fear was that the the activities that were going on in Korea were going to spread to Western Europe, to Western Germany, to France, to Italy, things like that. And so we needed a weapon that would prevent all this, that would make any ground war in Europe an unthinkable activity in the eyes of the Soviet army. And that is what this gigantic thing was built to do. This right here is M8, Field Artillery System M8 Redstone. Now, it doesn't really look like typical field artillery. It doesn't have a cannon barrel. It doesn't have wheels. But nonetheless, this was field artillery in the year 1958. And... Unlike any other field artillery system in all of human history, this thing had a explosive yield that would make God himself cry. A lot of people kind of lump nukes into one category as if they're all of equal destructive ability, and that is really not the case. So the weapon dropped on Hiroshima was a 14 kiloton weapon. The detonation that occurred in Beirut, Lebanon was one kiloton. Now, if you look at video footage of the Beirut detonation, it is absurd. And something that would be 14 times as powerful is in that itself insane. But what about something 4,000 times as powerful as the Beirut detonation? That's what this is right here. This is a four megaton nuclear warhead, equivalent to eight billion pounds of TNT. This is a weapon that alters society that a singular use of such a thing alters the history of a people group. The use of multiples of them, uh, an unthinkable act. And that is precisely why this thing was built, because the use of it was unthinkable, and the provocation of it to be used was also equally unthinkable. This was a weapon that was built to strike fear into Soviet generals that they would never imagine crossing the Fulda Gap, because on the other side, there was a monster. A genuine monster in the form of this beast, the M8 Redstone, the most powerful field artillery system to ever be deployed by any army in all of history, even to this day, and likely for the remainder of the future, because uh, 
tactical nuclear missiles like this have gone out of fashion, being replaced by much, much more accurate, conventionally armed weapons like the Dark Eagle, long-range hypersonic weapon, which we'll be talking about a little bit later. But first, did this thing achieve its goal? It did. Now, Redstone had a very, very short service life, only serving from 1958 to 1964, six years being remarkably short for weapon system with things like the B-52 having lasted well over 60 years. Uh, but ultimately, the time period in which it was deployed was a very, very tense period in Europe. Uh, notably, in 1962, there was the Cuban Missile Crisis, which was probably the closest we ever came to a nuclear first strike on the side of the Americans. Um, but ultimately, the standoff, thanks to weapons like this, was maintained, and peace was maintained, and we got to where we are without any more nukes ever being used. So excellent work guys uh, so I hope you guys have enjoyed the video in the near future we're going to be doing a video on the technical aspects of the redstone and why it was replaced so quickly by the Pershing 1 solid rocket system uh, and then we'll be talking about the Pershing 2 and its uh, political nature uh, that led to the INF treaty and then we'll be talking about the Dark Eagle and its political nature that led to where we are today. So if you guys have any interest in any of that stuff, uh, hit that subscribe button and stick around. Uh, there's a lot to talk about and I can't wait to get to it. So uh, thanks for sticking around boys and, uh, and girls, of course. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed the video and you guys take care of yourselves. I'll see you next time.